Ancient Rome is one of the world's greatest civilizations, fondly remembered for its huge influence on Western culture. Ever beneath all these admirable feats were stinking gutters of filth and absurdity that would make even Amu Haji, the world's dirtiest person, cringe in his grave in utter disbelief. From having big radishes and fishes shoved up the bottoms of criminals, to drinking the blood of gladiators to cure sicknesses, ancient Rome's level of creepiness is unimaginable. However, let me sound a warning. It's going to be a filthy, stinky ride, so put your nose masks on. Or you might want to get a paper bag if you feel like you're going to be sick. Ready? Right then, let's go. I begin with shoving radish or mullet fish up the bottoms of adulterers. Ancient Rome had strong laws against adultery and didn't deal kindly with them. Anyone caught in the act could be lynched by a mob led by the husband of the woman involved in the act. However, if the husband was civil enough to have the adulterer arrested, he would have mullet fish or radish shoved up his bottom. And it's not just any radish or fish, but a big, rough one, meant to cause more harm than pleasure. If Lady Luck frowned on the adulterer and he faced a harsher judge or a wicked husband, he could have both fish and radish run through him. Of course, this was way better than being slain by the sword, as was the penalty for adulterers. But I wonder how he'd visit the toilet to do number two, knowing full well the least strain could cause him the most intense pain. Worse still, how would he live the rest of his life when the entire community was there to witness a big muscular fish pushed into him? The shame, humiliation, and castigations alone would be enough for him to take your own life, which was pretty common in ancient Rome. Though that law didn't survive the Roman Empire, a few countries like Iran and Somalia still have strong laws against adulterers. Unlike ancient Rome, however, offenders are sometimes stoned till their last breath. A few states in the US, like Rhode Island, also criminalize adultery. But instead of taking your life, you're made to pay a fine of a few hundred dollars. I find this much better than the harsh, demoralizing punishment prescribed by the ancient Roman laws of having fish and radishes shoved up your bottom. Punishment for adultery is understandable, given the effects it can have on its victims and the society. But one practice that I found downright irritating was the drinking of gladiators' blood. The ancient Romans revered gladiators and venerated them in some form. They were seen as a symbol of Roman prowess, bravery, resilience, and endurance. The gladiator's willingness to die in the arena just to entertain the audience was seen as an act of honor, and the audience reciprocated by glorifying them. But it didn't end there. Somehow the people of ancient Rome came up with the weird concept that a gladiator's blood was potent enough to cure epilepsy. Now this might sound ridiculous by today's standards, but imagine yourself living in the third century without the blessings of modern science. You watch gladiators exhibit admirable feats of human strength and bravery by fighting and slaying all kinds of beasts and humans. And you think to yourself, if only I had that superhuman strength. This is akin to how we adore superheroes today and wish we had their unique powers. However, unlike our fictitious superheroes, theirs were real, and they saw them in live action week in and week out. So it becomes easier to believe that their blood contained special properties that made them unique. Thus, it must have been potent enough to cure ailments. But here comes the weirdest part. To ensure the blood's potency wasn't decreased, it had to be consumed fresh and warm. Therefore, once the gladiator fell in the arena, his throat was slit, and the fresh blood was sold at a premium price right there and then to the eager audience. The Romans were so obsessed with bodily fluids, so much that they had a thousand and one uses for pee. Nope, not the letter P, I mean urine. According to historians, they used urine to treat all kinds of skin diseases, such as acne and psoriasis. Of course it didn't work, but what I found more curious was using urine to treat a sore throat. I mean, can you imagine gaggling the fresh urine just because you felt an itch in your throat? No thank you, I'll settle for the sore throat. Some even drank the unsavory juice just to cure other kinds of ailments. And I must caution you, prepare your stomach for what you're about to hear. But before you throw up, kindly subscribe to our channel and ring the notification bell for more interesting videos such as these.
Right, where were we? Oh yes, of course, drinking pee. Now, as if drinking urine wasn't weird enough, the ancient Romans had the distasteful habit of using human fecal matter, which is a scientific term for feces, in tanning. Nope, not applying it on their skin and basking in the sun, but for producing leather. They soaked the animal hide in urine long enough to remove the hair, then ground human excrement into the hide to make it soft. And yes, the grinding was done with their bare hands. As for the stench, that's a story for another day. Is your stomach churning yet? Don't worry, it will. Hold on. The Romans also fertilized their crops with human excrement, which is nothing new. Some parts of modern-day Africa do the same, but instead of waiting for the feces to decompose, the Romans preferred to use the fresh ones. As if that's not enough weirdness, the Romans actually traded in poo. Believe it or not, some people in ancient Rome went around collecting fresh human poo and sold it. I can't help but wonder how they coped with all the stench that emanated from the fresh human waste without throwing up. Curiously, many of us can't stand the foul smell of public restrooms. The pungent smell alone could send us crouching on the floor, throwing up our intestines. Yet, we had brave ancient Romans trading in poo, probably smiling and congratulating themselves after making good sales. And oh, did I mention that there was a poo tax? Yes, money accrued from the sale of urine and poo was taxed by Emperor Vespasian around 70 CE. This tax sounded ridiculous even to the ancient Romans, who questioned its rationale, only for the emperor to respond, money doesn't stink. The tax became so famous that modern public restrooms in Italy are actually called Vespasiani, after Emperor Vespasian. What a way to go down in history. In fact, it'll take a whole video to detail ancient Rome's obsession with human urine and poo. But I'm willing to do it for your sake. If you'd like to see a video on it, then let me know in the comments section. Alright, away from the poo stories, let's do some myth busting. For a long time, stories were told of wealthy ancient Romans having special rooms called vomitoriums. These rooms were just like they sounded, a place to throw up all the food that they had eaten. No, they weren't ill. Rather, they wanted to make room for more food. You see, the Romans loved to throw lavish banquets where there was more food than they could eat. And being the greedy foodies that they were, the Romans stuffed their stomachs until they couldn't breathe. Normal people would have retired for the night, but not our ancient Romans. No, no. Instead of allowing all that wine, meat, and fish to go to waste, they'll enter the vomitoriums, choke themselves till they throw up and then return to the banquet for the next round of food. If this story sounds too ridiculous to be true, it's because it is. Of course there were vomitoriums, but they had nothing to do with throwing up to make way for more food. Instead, vomitoriums were passages in Roman theater halls, where the audience exited in large numbers after watching a play, much like what you might see today at a modern sports stadium. So, how did this myth come about? Well, let's just say some scholars literally interpreted vomitoriums to mean rooms where you go to vomit. So, for many years, the ancient Romans were ridiculed, through no fault of theirs, but due to scholarly misconceptions. However, one thing that scholars didn't get wrong was the fact that the ancient Romans used to ground mouse brains in their toothpaste. And if you think that is stomach churning, wait till you hear the rest of the ingredients. The Romans added ground oyster shells, animal bones, charcoal, and the most important ingredient, what else? You guessed it, human urine. Yes, we're back to urine stories. The Romans valued the ammonia properties of urine, which served as a teeth whitener and a mouth rinser. The mouse brains were also thought to enhance the toothpaste's efficacy, and the shells gave the paste its abrasive qualities. Talking about brains, did you know that the Romans ate lamb and ostrich brains? Some sources indicate that there was a banquet where hundreds of ostrich brains were served to the patrons. Other reported delicacies the Romans enjoyed included dormice, flamingo tongues, the womb of a sow, and a fermented fish sauce, usually called garum. I don't know about you, but any of these foods could easily send me to an early grave. And this brings us to the end of today's episode. If you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And if you thought the ancient Romans were the creepiest civilization, wait until you discover the haunting everyday creepiness of ancient Egyptian society, where they had a special doctor in charge of the pharaoh's bum. I'll see you there. Thanks ever so much for watching.